Now, the unemployment rate is at 9.8. They say it'll go to 10.2. 15 million Americans out of work. 45 to 50 million with no health insurance, fighting two wars. The dollar is weak and falling. All the things that he warned us of, they're in our face now. So what is the prospect for tomorrow? Are you expecting that this economic downturn is going to turn up for you? I just want you to think on that one for a minute. Because if it doesn't, and I have to tell you, the country is already bankrupt. It was that before we elected Barack Obama. They say that the debt is between seven and nine trillion dollars. Wrong. If you count Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, it's up to $63 trillion. So the little trillion that he added to it with the stimulus package that bailed out the crooks. That's right. He's trying to do something. He don't want it to fall on his watch, but it is falling. Now, when the dollar becomes worthless, because the more money you print with nothing to back it, you weaken the dollar that you have in your pocket. From what I just read this morning, the dollar has fallen 10% in the last three months and has fallen by a third in the last few years. So the dollar, I remember, I mean, I'm of that age that I can remember buying a Cadillac, um, what, that El Dorado. In 1972, I had an El Dorado. You know, Negroes always want <laughs> And I hadn't outgrown my Negro mentality, <laughs> even though I was a good Muslim. <laughs> I got that broom for $12,000. I bought a Lincoln Continental for 8000 and change. Try that today. You can't get a scooter. <laughs> the dollar is falling. Well, this is a leadership conference, and I, I, I don't want to bore you, beloved, but it's what is needed now is leadership. That's right. That's right. Good, substantive, wise leadership. That's right. The old way will not work. I don't know, we may have some college students here today. Are there any students from the university or from college here today? Yes, a few. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Now, look at these students. They're in school. What are they studying? Well, I may be studying uh, black history, black studies. Sorry, that won't work in a white economy. So you better be thinking about how you're going to take your black studies to black people and they're not interested. I'm studying sociology. Well, that's good. But the sociologists can't figure out this social problem. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm majoring in psychology. Oh, that's wonderful. But most of the psychologists are at their wits' end to fathom the mindset 
that the economic turndown is creating in the country. It's happening right in front of your eyes in Memphis. The fabric of Memphis society is unraveling crime and violence on the increase and our young people have that sense of being abandoned. We look at them with their pants dropped, you know, below the equator. <laughs> and we say, this is, a, this is a strange looking generation here, man. They got their head cocked to the side. Said, Damn, this is my child? How, how did you get so stupid? And this is the way we talk to them now. Listen, boy. Listen, girl. What is this you got on here? Oh, my, you so old-fashioned. But let's go back to the 40s. Look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Did you have on your zoot suit? Talk to me. <laughs> your pig pants? Mm -hmm. Did you have that pompadour? That you had slicked and all the way back, you know? Did you have your chain on? Hidey, hidey, hidey ho. <laughs> See, these young people don't know that, but I know it. Mm -hmm. And we were the children then that our parents looked at and said, Boy, what is this? I... I buy these pants and you pegging them? <laughs> well, I came from a Caribbean family, so you know, I had my accent and thing, you know. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, we had a dance that we did that our parents didn't understand. Now your children got a dance that you don't, I watch them on TV, I don't. The energy, I said, my God, man, this, this rap stuff, hip hop culture, that's monstrous. I have to ask the children, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? What, what, what is he saying? Well, now look, their minds are so quick, so fast, so sharp. <clears throat> we are losing them because they already lost us. Now there has to be in our leadership a bridge to connect the elders with the youth. Because if it continues like this, we are now some of our top leaders. And I was at the funeral uh, last week of Darian uh, Albert, the young boy that was beat to death on the streets of Chicago. And uh, his mother asked if I would have words. And I said, you know, our youth are not incorrigible. They're not irredeemable. They're not hopeless. They're not lost. You just have to know how to find them and bring them back. You have lost the science of how to do this. And it's not, it's not wrong to admit you don't know. Because it's clear we don't. If we knew, we would have done better by our children. But now look at this. I said, Jesus made a parable of a man that had a hundred sheep. And one got lost. And he turned his back on the 99 that were found. And he went after the sheep that was lost. I said, who will join me in going after the sheep that got lost? Not only did God come to find the sheep that was lost, he said, not only will I find him, but I'm going to bring him again and settle him on the mountains of Israel. See, God, this is not a problem too hard for God, but it's hard for the fakers. 